Sin is conceived. It is birthed. And then if you nurture it, and you care for it, and you let it hang around, and you let it grow, it does lead to death. We can't let sin hang around and lead to death. We've got to destroy it early. This is a Truth Transforms Truth Nugget. A daily dose of truth for your daily transformation. Welcome back to another Truth Nugget. My name is Adam Markley. We're going to continue where we left off in our series through James, these Truth Nuggets in James. We are picking back up in the sermon entitled Faith That Overcomes Temptation. This is in James chapter 1, verses 13 to 15. We've been talking about the severity of sin and temptation and how we cannot let ourselves be running into temptation. No, we must run away from temptation. We must not flirt with temptation because that temptation leads to sin and that sin gets cultivated and that sin uh, begins to grow up. It, it moves from being a baby sin to a toddler sin to an adult sin. That sin grows up and it matures and we don't want to allow that to happen. If you're new here, there's a playlist to all of the Truth Nuggets in James. These are each and every day, Monday through Friday. So uh, be sure to subscribe and like this video. Help us reach more people. You get Truth Nuggets each and every day, Monday through Friday. And there's a playlist below so you can get caught up. Also, there is a gift for you on Lessons in Philippians. It's an overview of Philippians that can be an encouragement during this time. You can pick back, pick that up also in the link below, description and pinned comment, and you can go to preachingforgodsglory.org forward slash gift. That's preachingforgodsglory.org forward slash gift. So let's pick up where we left off in faith that overcomes temptation. There was an illustration that I was giving about the fact that God will always provide a way of escape, and uh, but if we don't take that way of escape, then we can run headlong into temptation. So we must pay attention to the escapes that God will give us from temptation and from walking further down that path. Let's pick it back up where we left off yesterday, backing it up just a little bit. Here it is. That's what happens if we hang around sin. You know, if we hang around temptation, if we don't run away from it, we will cave. Why? Because it's enticing. Because it's luring. You're staring at that ice cream and you were lured by that ice cream. You literally felt dragged into the bowl. <laughs> it's a humorous account, but that's what life is like when we hang around temptation. We need to run away from temptation and get as far away from it as we can. So we need to remember, too, that it's our fault. We can't, we can't blame that situation with the ice cream. We can't blame it on God. We can't blame it on the ice cream manufacturers for making it so good. We've got to blame it on ourselves. We're the ones that took the spoon and dug in. We're the ones that are the cause for the consequences that come from sin. So we need to stop sin as soon as possible. We need to cut off the temptation. We need to get out of the situation. And if we've given away a little bit, we need to starve the sin out of our lives because it grows. Sin matures and progresses. Well, look at verse 15. Verse 15 shows us a, a terrible consequence, actually a terrible progression that occurs. We need to destroy sin that leads to death. Verse 15. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So James continues, uh, and he describes this terrible progression that takes place. The progression that he's describing is a, is a maturing process here, as a process of growth. He says that sin is conceived from desire. And so he makes it clear that sin is an issue of the heart. That's where it starts. And it's pretty clear that he was paying close attention to Jesus. Uh, because this is exactly what Jesus described during the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus walked through with his disciples on the Sermon on the Mount. He, he walked through the Ten Commandments, the summary of God's moral law. And he said, you know what, it's more than outward actions. In fact, it begins in the heart. He said, you know, you've heard that it was said, thou shalt not murder. 
But I say to you, anyone that says to a man, you fool, is guilty of murder in the heart. He says it begins with the heart. When vengeance rises up in the heart, when rage rises up in the heart, that's murder in the eyes of God. He goes on, he talks about adultery. He says we know adultery is sin, uh, but I tell you, if anyone looks, a man looks at his a woman with lustful intent, he's committed adultery with her in his heart. He gets to the origin, the origin of the sin, which is the sinful desire in the heart. It all begins in the heart. He says the same thing about speech. He says people say sinful things, but out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Sin begins in the heart, and this is the sinful desire that James is talking about. NIV translates this evil desire. This is the evil the desire that's rising up within, uh, getting us to commit a wrongful act. The desire, the passions that wage war within, James talks about later on. Uh, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Is it not the desire, uh, the passions from within? You, you want and you don't get, so you murder, and he goes on. This is what he's talking about, the sinful desires from within that come uh, and progress. And Jesus was revealing the true purpose of the law as he walked through the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, walked through the Ten Commandments. He's, and the purpose is to reveal the sin in our heart. And so James is echoing this teaching, and he says that it all starts with this desire, this sinful desire. So it might be, it might lead to things like thoughts and feelings of vengeance after being wronged. It might be feelings towards someone you've never forgiven. It might be feelings of ungratefulness. Whatever it is, this is where it starts. It begins with desire. You know, then he explains that desire gives birth to sin. Uh, sinful actions are conceived from sinful desires. So he gives a picture of birth here. There's an image created that sin is birthed as a little baby. It desires like a baby in the womb. The baby's growing. The baby gets bigger. Then at some point, the baby is born. This is the next stage of progression. Well, what happens after that baby is born? Uh, well, that baby will grow up, but there are a few things that need to happen. You need to care for the baby. You need to give attention to the baby. You need to nurture the baby. Uh, you need to do everything necessary to get that baby to grow up. And he's saying that's, that happens with sin. The sin is conceived. It is birthed. And then if you nurture it and you care for it and you let it hang around and you let it grow, it does lead to death. We can't let sin hang around and lead to death. We've got to destroy it early. Uh, so you recognize things, you destroy them early. Sinful attitudes you recognize, you destroy it early. Sinful speech, you recognize, you kill it early. We need to kill that sin early before it grows up into full maturity, which is what he says next. It is fully, when it is fully grown, it brings forth death. So he makes a great contrast between life that matures and sin that also matures. There's a conception and there's a birth and there's a maturing of life. Well, there's also a conception and a birth and a maturing of death. Uh, one leads to life and the other leads to death. Sin leads to death. But faith in Christ leads to life. So we need to pursue Christ at all times. We absolutely need to pursue Christ at all times. We need to remember that when we walk into sin and give into temptation, that that temptation is a conception of a baby sin that will grow up if it is fed and it is fostered and it is continually given into. We cultivate sin. We foster sin as we continually and habitually give into temptation and continue to commit the same sin. We are giving that sin a reason to stay with us and that sin becomes our little baby and that sin becomes a baby that we're taking care of and we don't want to be doing that with any 
sin. We need to make sure that we destroy it early. We need to make sure that we don't fall into the temptation. We need to make sure that we confess that sin and that we turn from that sin and we turn to Christ and focus on Christ. And we can ask Christ to forgive us of the sin. We can ask Christ to remove that temptation from us, to provide that way of escape. And of course, Seek God in his word and in prayer to reveal those sins in your life. Praying, Lord, would you help me to recognize what sinful tendencies I have and what temptations I need to be aware of so that I can avoid them and focus wholeheartedly on you. And the Lord will reveal that to you and You'll be able to go to passages of scripture, of course, that will help with that as well. Let's pray for that now. Father, I do pray that you would help us to see the sin in our life, to see the temptations that we have given each of our individual tendencies with our sinful nature. If we do know you, Lord, whoever does know you, uh, then Truly, they've been born again, and they've experienced a new life, a heart that desires to please you, a heart that desires to walk in righteousness, a heart that desires to not sin, and that hates sin, and that wants to stay far away from sin. But we know that we still sin, and we know that we still continue to do things in disobedience to you and are grieved by it. And so I pray that you would help us to recognize our temptations and turn from our temptations and turn to you, Lord, so that we don't let temptations turn into sins, small sins leading to greater sins, because we want to live in a way that is pleasing and honoring to you. And we pray it in agreement in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining me for today's Truth Nugget. We will pick back up with this in the next episode. God bless you. I'll see you next time.